This is the New Zealand sea lion, one of the rarest sea lion species in the world. In the 1800s, relentless overhunting decimated the population to a point where it was completely wiped out from the mainland of New Zealand, only surviving on a handful of subantarctic islands. Until now. This is an incredible comeback story, as sea lions restake their claim here in New Zealand after nearly 150 years of absence. However, as this re-established population starts to grow, only a stone's throw away from the city of Dunedin, what new threats will they face? I'm here to find out. My name is JJ Emerson, and on this trip we're in New Zealand on the hunt for the endangered New Zealand sea lion. This story starts with one very special sea lion, affectionately named Mum, who is immortalised in a statue on one of Dunedin's most popular beaches. This is Mum, and she is easily the most significant sea lion in this comeback story of New Zealand sea lions reclaiming the beaches along the coastlines of New Zealand. Mum returned to New Zealand from the subantarctic islands in 1993 and was the first sea lion to have a pup on these beaches in well over 100 years. Now to understand why this is so significant, you've got to go further back into this species history, you know, its dark history. In the 1800s, this species was hunted to near extinction because of sealing, because people were hunting them for their pelts and furs. These sealers, they were also whalers, they decimated so many species across so many countries. And it was during the 1800s that the sea lions more or less disappeared from New Zealand's beaches altogether, only found on a handful of subantarctic islands. Now mum, she decided one day, I'm sick of these islands, maybe it's too cold, maybe she just wanted to change the scenery, but she made her way up to New Zealand, close to Dunedin, and had this pup, the first one in over a hundred years, and then she proceeded to have several pups. Without her, this story wouldn't exist. It's believed she lived to around 25 years old, one day she just didn't return to the beaches. She is such an incredible animal, the matriarch of the New Zealand sea lions. There are lots of cool things you can do here in Dunedin, but one thing that you must do is head out onto the peninsula in search of wildlife. There are penguins, two types, little blue penguins, yellow-eyed penguins, albatross, fur seals, whales, dolphins. It's absolute mecca for marine life. But those guys are gonna have to wait, because we're on the hunt for sea lions. Well, sometimes the wildlife has other ideas. I'm out here on the tip of the peninsula, just kind of checking everything out before going to look for these sea lions. And there's a New Zealand fur seal right here in the rolling waves. This environment seems so harsh to us, but it is just perfect for this marine wildlife. All right, so before something else can rock up and distract me, let's get find some sea lions. Now, the first spot to try and find some sea lions today is a beautiful little spot called Sandfly Bay. It looks absolutely spectacular. And it's called Sandfly Bay, not because there are sand flies everywhere, supposedly because of how the sand flies off the dunes when the big rolling winds come through. It's so beautiful. And hopefully we'll find some sea lions down there as well. And it was in this moment that I caught my first glimpse of a New Zealand sea lion, also known as Hooker's sea lions. A big sleepy sandy male. This was the species I'd traveled to see, but he wasn't the only sea lion on the beach. And he certainly wasn't the biggest. This is the Beachmaster, the largest, most dominant male on the beach. He is in control of this stretch of Sandfly Bay. Big males can weigh up to 450 kilos and develop a big shaggy mane of fur around their chest and neck. It isn't hard to see why they call them sea lions. So I've just made it down onto the beach here at Sandfly Bay. Mate, it is windy, sandy, surfy, salty. You know, it is a beautiful spot and I can already see five sea lions. So straight into it. This is like the first time that I've ever seen this species in the flesh. So I'm so pumped. There's a big old male over there who's covered himself with sand, female further down the beach. And then just in front of me here is three sea lions. I think there's a female in the mix, a young male, and then a big adult male. He's probably the biggest one that I can see on the beach right now. And this young male, he looks a little bit cheeky. He keeps kind of like, getting in a little bit close to this other couple. So I think this is where the action's gonna be. So <laughs> another young male's just rocked up. And this guy looks like even more of a troublemaker than the first one. So yeah, yeah, here we go.
At first glance, these sparring matches may seem intense, but that isn't the case for these sub-adult males. Although they will need these valuable skills in the future to secure a patch of beach and a harem of females, for now, this wrestling is all just fun and game. I don't think the big fella is too impressed with their antics. I think it's all starting to die down now, but how funny is this? This big fella's just sitting there with his girl, getting sprayed in the face with sand. She's just, they're doing this thing where they're, they're burying themselves in the sand. I, again, I don't know if it's like to protect from the sun or from flies or just like, you know, us comfy having a blanket on, but he's just getting sand in his face. Although the big male occasionally felt the need to assert himself, he was surprisingly tolerant and relaxed around the other sea lions, even the young males, which isn't always the case during breeding season. Once the sun was at its highest, the sea lions took to the water, which is where they spend a considerable amount of time hunting their favourite foods of fish, squid, octopus and crustaceans. However, in this case, I think everyone just needed to cool off. The young males took their fun to the water, engaging like this for well over an hour with boundless energy. They even took the time to terrorise a smaller, unsuspecting New Zealand fur seal who was resting on the beach. The New Zealand fur seal is the most common pinniped that you will find in New Zealand, usually resting high up on the rocks. He'll definitely think twice before picking this beach again. You know, this is probably in the top three, if not the single best marine mammal experience I think I've ever had. I'm running on day one. I'm getting absolutely annihilated by the sun and the wind at this point, but I cannot think of anywhere else I would rather be than on this beach right now. And it seems I'm not the only one that feels this way, with plenty of sea lions choosing this beach to rest on. They make just about anything look comfy, even a pillow made of rock. This female was the sweetest little thing. She acknowledged my presence and then chose to rest right in front of me. But female sea lions like this need to be aware of the big males at this time of year. They come into estrus at a fairly routine and predictable time and the males know this. They'll patrol the beach in search of females to mate with. And if they find one, they are a force to be reckoned with. This bull means business. So one thing that is really, really important if you're lucky enough to see these sea lions is giving them the space that they deserve. The Department of Conservation here in New Zealand recommends 10 metres to 20 metres depending on the situation with the animals. You know, if they're resting, 10 metres is okay. If they're up and about, maybe stay a little bit further away. But you also got to use your own discretion. There's an individual here, a big bull. He's got some scars on him. He's actually got some fresh wounds on him as well. You know, he's, he's probably recently been in a fight with another male and he is in rut. Now, rut basically means all he can see is that female that he wants to mate with. Nothing else matters. So I'm going to have a bit of extra distance from him uh, because, you know, he's a lot more unpredictable. He's fixated on that female. If he sees me as a threat or too close, it could be uh, bad news for me. Mating is intense and exhausting for New Zealand sea lions as both male and female will spend days on shore, not even returning to the ocean to eat. Where larger populations of this species still exist, places like the Auckland Islands and the Subantarctic, males will spread out their time amongst a harem of females which could number up to 25 individuals. But here on the Otago Peninsula, the number of sea lions is still so low that you will often see one-on-one -on -one interactions like this, which can be exhausting for the female. Sometimes the male's constant advances are so relentless they've been known to drown or even kill a female sea lion. This big fella is really, really interesting to watch. So as soon as the female moves or looks like she's moving away, he'll basically just come right up to her and, you know, body slam her. Like she is not allowed to leave his personal space. Hopefully as the population continues to increase, more natural harems will return to this part of New Zealand and take a bit of pressure off these females. Sea lions are pinnipeds, which translates to wing-footed or fin-footed. And there are 34 species that you can find around the world, with New Zealand being a hotspot for them. New Zealand sea lions belong to the family known as Otaridae, also known as eared seals. They have external ear flaps that are rolled inward tightly to ensure no water enters directly into the ear when swimming. 
They also have highly sensitive whiskers called vibrissae, which assist them when hunting at depths of up to 500 meters below the surface. Sea lions use their strong foreflippers to get around while swimming, capable of quick bursts of speed and incredible agility. On land, they can utilize all four flippers to walk in an upright position. These flexible rear flippers allow them to walk or even run across the sand a lot quicker than most people would expect. These rear flippers also have small grooming claws, a bit like an inbuilt hairbrush, which allow the sea lions to get rid of any old fur, knots or dreadlocks, particularly useful during the annual molt. They are incredibly robust animals, with a thick layer of blubber to help keep them warm. They are designed to survive the cold ocean temperatures and harsh southern ocean winds that batter these coastlines. They're much better equipped for it than I am. I've been lucky enough to spend time amongst several different species of sea lion, and something that I have observed behaviourally is they are inherently curious and playful animals, always looking for their own fun and games. An example of this came about with this young sea lion, and although I had respected the distance set out by the Department of Conservation at over 50 metres away, this young go-getter continually did mock charges before running around in a circle and repeating the motion again and again, no matter how far I moved away. She then set her sights on some red-billed gulls, chasing them around in a similar way. I think this playfulness and curiosity are one of the main things that draws people to seals and sea lions, and why they often get the nickname the puppy dogs of the ocean. However, as previously stated, it is important to give them the recommended space, even if the sea lions have other ideas. These sort of interactions are likely to occur more and more, with sea lions returning to the mainland of New Zealand. When they were wiped out, Dunedin and the peninsula were very different places. Farmland dominates the area now, and it's not uncommon to see sheep on the grassy slopes behind the dunes where the sea lions are residing. Additionally, there are roads, buildings, parks and golf courses, plus a lot more people than ever before. The sea lions are a huge draw card to the area, and everyone should have the opportunity to appreciate and enjoy them. However, increased visitation and an increase of sea lion numbers also means increased human and sea lion encounters. Although I've been lucky enough to see plenty of sea lions on this trip so far, one thing I am eager to see is some pups. It is the right time of year, however these clever mums make it a rather difficult thing to accomplish. The New Zealand sea lion has a very interesting tactic to protect their pups from one, big males, and two, the wild coastal weather, those winds just coming straight across the beach and off the southern ocean. They'll actually take their pups right inland into the dunes, into the forests, and stash them in there quite a significant distance from the beach itself. And I can see why they do it, mate. These winds are wild. You know, that sand's just whipping straight across the beach, into my eyes, into my face. It's a pretty wild coastline. So the last thing I want to do is to go trudging off into the vegetation to look for these mums and pups. I'm pretty sure there's some in this spot where I am right now, but they go there to be safe. They go there to be secure. Don't want to go and disturb them, of course. And this is leading to a very interesting and recent conflict of cars and traffic with sea lions. As the females head inland to try and find places to stash their pups, they're heading into people's farms, into people's homes, the golf course over here as well, but they've got to cross the roads to do so. There's quite a lot of signage up at the moment to encourage people to slow down and be very aware as they're driving so they don't accidentally hit a sea lion, mum or pup that's either crossing the road or sometimes even resting on the road. The Department of Conservation are making an increased effort to limit human impact in areas where pups are being born, setting up barricades and even closing down roads to ensure that mums and pups feel safe and secure. Mate, it is windy out here today, but I've just come across a prime example of what I was talking about. These sea lions finding comfort in some pretty bizarre places. There is a mum and pup just under the bush here, right next to this coastal road. They're in there protecting themselves from this relentless wind. This location hosts one of Dunedin's most popular walking tracks and an access road to a lookout point, a seemingly interesting spot to keep your pups safe. Incredibly, the local community seem to embrace the presence of these sea lions, with many mesmerised onlookers stopping to see the pair. People were keeping their dogs on leash, respecting the barriers, and I didn't hear a single complaint about the road being closed. What an amazing community. Whew. Mate, that is some wild weather out there. Mama sea lion has the right idea, tucked up 
under that bush. How good was that? That little pup, so cute. There was actually another pup hiding a little bit further in the bushes. He kind of poked his head out briefly, but just that pup, he was having a big feed of milk, very rich milk. He's got to grow up big and strong. And then he was like kind of, you know, trying to get comfortable, trying to get into a nice comfortable spot to rest. So can't ask for much better than that. But the crazy thing is we are so close to Dunedin, like, you know, to the city. We're not even out on the peninsula. And these mama sea lions are choosing to come up and give birth and rest in these locations. It's, it's really quite interesting. People are having to learn to live amongst these guys. So they're just coming in closer and closer. My time amongst the sea lions is nearly at an end. And on my final morning, I wasn't having much luck. The big tides hadn't left much sand for the sea lions to rest on. Nice early start this morning to try and catch sea lions and sunrise. I've definitely got the sunrise. It's looking pretty good out there, but no sea lions to be seen. But sea lions aren't the only pinnipeds that frequent this beach. Well, I haven't found any sea lions, but just behind me here, there was a New Zealand fur seal sleeping. I didn't see him. He didn't see me. We both gave each other the fright of our lives and he's just headed back down to the water. That's where they feel safe. They get a fright and he's looking pretty majestic against the beautiful sunrise. The spot I was exploring was where I'd found that big bull in rut just a few days prior. I thought perhaps him and his girlfriend had moved on, but boy, was I wrong. So you really need to pay attention when you're exploring around these rocks and cliffs at the edge of the beach. They seriously just blend in with the rocks so well. You think, oh, it's a rock. No, it's a sea lion. Oh, it's a log. No, it's a sea lion. Oh, it's a sea lion. No, it's a log. Glad I gave the first seal a fright and not this guy, because he is absolutely massive. They're just starting to wake up. So I think we'll hang around and see what they get up to. These two were having a sleepy morning and were much more relaxed and likely exhausted compared to when I saw them the other day. Did she just give him a pat? Unfortunately, it seems this female sustained a recent eye injury, although it's hard to assess whether it occurred during the vigorous mating process or if it was an injury she sustained beforehand. However, one thing I know about sea lions is they are resilient and hopefully it doesn't hinder her too much in the future and she goes on to have many fit and healthy pups. So since I first stumbled across these little puppies, I have come down over a few days just to check in on them. And uh, sometimes there's been both mums here with their pups. Yesterday, both mums were out fishing, so the pups were kind of huddled together under the bush. This morning, both mums have come back. They look absolutely exhausted. So they're just kind of getting some Zs, having a rest. You can probably tell it's a lot less windy today, so they don't need to seek that shelter as much. They can afford to be out in the open a little bit more, but they're just too cute for words. Absolutely incredible. The next generation of New Zealand sea lions. These pups are only around a month old and will be dependent on their mother's milk for around a year. Sea lion milk is incredibly fatty, so these pups will grow up very quickly, developing a layer of insulating blubber to help keep them warm in the frigid Southern Ocean. But for now, they don't have a care in the world. Being cute is the name of the game and they are pretty damn good at it. This is a whole new world for this sea lion pup and his dedicated mother. A lot has changed since their ancestors pupped on these shores 150 years ago. They'll face new challenges on the mainland and face ongoing threats, including commercial fisheries, climate change, and even disease. However, each pup is significant. From the very first pup born in 1993 to the beloved mum, to this little one now, they are part of a comeback story for New Zealand sea lions. And I feel privileged to be witnessing it firsthand. Sadly, my time amongst the New Zealand sea lions has come to an end, but their story, their future is looking really bright. It's one of many great comebacks that have happened over the years with New Zealand's wildlife, New Zealand wildlife conservation. These guys are leading the game and it's exciting to see what the future holds for these amazing marine mammals.